Can you hear me? I mean, can you hear what I'm saying? Yes, I can hear you. Just oh. about to my class. So perfect. Perfect. It looks like it's just you and me here today. And I've go, I'm gonna go ahead and um get I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Sorry, my watch is talking to me. So um so we're here today to talk about um, how to share Apple proficiency port reports with parents. We're going to talk about that. And hopefully, if it's just you and me, we can just kind of go through and have a discussion about this. I'm Julie Butler. I've seen you before, and I think you've seen me too. Um, I am a specialist in the instructional supports department, and I support elementary dual language immersion. I'm also the, co the coaching coordinator in our district. So um, here are our professional development norms. We just ask everyone that they be committed to learning and focused on um, the task at hand, being responsible, be respectful, um, allow others to listen and to speak, and then also be safe. So take care of your needs if you need anything. You can go ahead and take care of that. If you need to go, that's fine. Um, please ask questions and um, we'll just go on from there. Um, be sure to have your microphone muted and your camera on. If, if you can do that, you can blur your background if you'd like. Um, and if you have any questions, you can just chime in because it's just you and me here today. Um, maybe some others will join us later. Mm -hmm. So in... Um, all of the professional learning that we do, we focus on our multi-tiered system of supports. And, and today we're gonna to be talking about data for decision-making and especially student performance data with the Apple test. Um, so today we're, what we're really talking about is that um, our learning intention is I can learn how to read the results from the Apple score report and effectively share that information with parents. And you'll know you're successful when you can share that Apple report um, with parents at your parent-teacher conference time. Mm -hmm. So um, here's our agenda. These are all the things we're gonna talk about today. It se might seem like a lot, but they all go together. So first of all, what is the Apple measure? We'll talk a little bit about performance versus proficiency, um, the actful proficiency scale, the Utah DLI proficiency targets, um, the DLI performance benchmarks, accessing the Apple score report, reading the Apple score report, um, grade level um, proficiency reports, and then sharing that information with parents at parent teacher conferences. So um, we're gonna start with just what the Apple measure is. We know that the app, APPLE stands for assessment, the actual assessment of performance towards proficiency in languages. So it is a standardized performance test that's given across the United States, not just in Utah, but across the United States in foreign language classes to give parents, students, and teachers and administrators information about how a student is progressing with a language in the areas of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So um, the Apple measures, it assesses the following modes of communication um, in the following grade levels. So we start the Apple test in third grade and we test through ninth grade. Um, and you'll notice that um, we start in third grade with interpersonal listening and speaking. And then we move on to um, adding in reading, listening and writing in the various grades. Mm -hmm. um, remember that the Apple test is only given once a year, only once. Um, in our district in the state of Utah, we give that Apple test in the fall. And then usually we get those results um, and the reports back to us sometime in January. And then we have, um, been standard about sharing those out in our elementary schools at parent-teacher conferences 
at the end of February. Um, our middle schools usually send those out home with to parents um, at the beginning of February, so you're aware. So let's talk about language proficiency. Um, language proficiency in a foreign language is something that you can do with the language. In real world situations, it should be spontaneous and non-rehearsed. So if I walked up to you onto the street, um, we could have a conversation about whatever topics we um, want to talk about. Um, and the reason that we look for proficiency is because we want our communication to be effective and we want to prepare um, we want to prepare students for the for real world language use. Um, and we want to motivate our learners for success. So um, that is one of the reasons why we spend so much time talking about proficiency. One of the things that I want to um, share the difference with you about is, is performance versus proficiency. Because the Apple test is a performance test. And then it kind of gives you a guide as to where proficiency is. So um, we don't necessarily say that a student is proficient. You know, it, it gives a range of proficiency levels, but the test itself is a performance assessment. So a performance assessment is something that is learned and practiced. Um, it is familiar um, with the context and the content areas. It's evaluation of skills that are taught in practice, and it's a measurement that is based on a one-time performance of the criteria in a simulated situation. So that's why you think about if somebody, if you're going to go watch a play or something like that, those kids have practiced that. There's a specific skill set that they're working on, and then there comes a day when we perform that. We, we actually perform the things that we've been practicing. So proficiency is a little bit different because Proficiency can happen spontaneously. We know that it's not rehearsed. Um, you can speak to a broad range of content and in context of authentic situations. Um, it's independent of a program or the when, where, and how, how like say a sport is acquired. And it's measured based on sustaining all the criteria for the level all the time in various real kind of game situations. So we can say that if you're going to want to compare it to a sport, you could say that the performance test is like those practice games or the tryouts where you go and you focus on certain skills. And then the proficiency is the game where you're just going out and you're playing it in the moment in real time. And so there are different actual um, assessments for those two things. So the Apple test is considered a performance assessment and like the OPI is to determine proficiency, that you could just go and have a conversation about anything at any time, okay? So um, when we start talking about that Apple test and the score report that comes, um, there's a proficiency scale that ACTFL um, has for us to, to guide us through that. That proficiency scale was developed from the federal government's ILR scale by ACTFL, and it has four main levels. So you have novice, intermediate, advanced, and superior. And within those first three levels, the novice, intermediate, and advanced, there are sub, they're subdivided into three sublevels. So the low, the medium, and the high. And you guys are very familiar um, with this already. Um, let's just talk about them for a quick second. So um, as a way for you to help explain this to parents. So the novice is like the parrot. It's memorized words, phrases, simple sentences. You have those sentence frames. You say them to the kids. They parrot them back to you. Um, it's very practiced situations. Intermediate, low, medium, and high um, is kind of like the survivor mode with, with the backpack. You have what you need. You can create sentences and or a series of sentences with the language. You can ask and answer questions on familiar topics. You can handle simple situations, like I could go ask for water or find out where the bathroom is or order a sandwich or something like that. That would be intermediate, low, medium, and high. And then we move on to advanced. 
Advanced also has low, medium, and high. That would be the storyteller, um, kind of the storyteller uh, example where you can narrate. You can, you're the, the student can speak in past, present, and future tense. They can talk in detail. They can write text and organize it. They can share their point of view. They can express themselves fully on familiar topics and they can handle complicated situations. And then lastly, we have superior, and that's really the scholar, where they can um, discuss abstract topics, they can hypothesize, they can support opinions, they can handle linguistically unfamiliar situations. These kids are ready to go to college and be able to participate in um, the language fully in an academic forum. You'll notice that superior does not have a subdivision. It doesn't have a low, medium, or high because they are already at the level where they can communicate um, regularly and well. So when we start talking about these different, um, different proficiency, the state of Utah has proficiency targets. And you'll notice here that on these proficiency targets, we have um, it, French, German, Portuguese, and Spanish table, and then we have one that's specific to Chinese and Russian. And you'll notice that it has grades from um, grade first grade until 12th grade. And so um, this is what the state of Utah sets as the target for students to be able to reach by the end of that grade level. So you'll notice that in first grade, in let's say French or Spanish, that the expectation for listening would be novice mid. For speaking, it would also be novice mid. For reading, novice mid, and writing, novice mid. And then when you move into second grade, you'll notice that it's kind of split. You're listening, it might be novice high, but when you get over to reading and writing, we're still at novice mid. Those are the proficiency targets, what we expect kids to be able to do by the end of their first grade year, second grade year, all the way up to their 12th grade year, okay? Those are step by the state dual immersion team. Um, these are the Apple performance benchmarks. And you'll notice that we don't have first grade on here because our first grade students do not take the Apple test. We begin Apple testing in third grade. And so these are the performance benchmarks that um, when they test in fall of that year, this is where, ex where we're expecting our students to be in third grade all the way up through ninth grade where we test for um, with the Apple test. Um, those can be found, you guys have access to those. They can also be found on the Utah DLI website. Now, in order to access the score reports, um, each of the teachers, you guys should have access to those already in your with your LTI login. Um, do either of you guys have access to those already? Have you looked in and tried to find those? Actually, I have two classes, but this year I can only access one of the classes. Okay, yes. And do you find the same? Yes, the same happened to me. I only have access to one of my classes. Okay, um, yes. So your principal should have access to both of those classes. And I know that your, um, that your um, instructional coach also has access to a Google folder that has um, all of the reports for the entire school that they can print out for you. So if you would like to have help accessing those or getting those printed, you can reach out to your principal. You can also reach out to your instructional coach and they can, they can go ahead and um, help you print all of those so that you have access to them, okay? All right. I just want to let you know as well is that these Apple scores, the, the reports will also be uploaded to Skyward for families. I don't know if this has ever happened to you before, but I know it's happened to me when I was a coach at a DLI school where the parents says, um, you know, the Apple report was destroyed. We want to print another one. And I would say you always have access to that. It's located in your um, Skyward family access. If you go to that, um, to the screen on the left, it, it will be under student login, student report cards and test results. 
along with RISE testing and if there's Acadians benchmarking and things like that. Anything that is a state mandated test is usually uploaded there into Skyward. Um, we checked this morning with um, research and assessment and the, the scores were sent over to our um, IT team and they are in the process of uploading those now. We will let you know when they, those test results have been uploaded into Skyward. So you can let the parents know definitely by um, February when you're having those parent-teacher conferences, they should be uploaded then. All right. Um, all right, let's talk about Apple score reports. So um, this is an example. This one happens to be um, from Korea. <laughs> it's Korean. <laughs> language, but it all pretty much says the same thing. That first page is going to contain information about the proficiency guidelines and the performance ranges. So the table will say, here are the ranges and the kind of the color coding that goes along with it. The second page contains the student performance report information. And you'll notice that the um, that on this, it, there's a little diamond that's next to the color under each of those particular areas, like inter, you know, interpersonal listening and speaking, they have a diamond that's up there next to advanced. So this student happens to be advanced in Korean at this particular time. And then it gives a score description, what they can do. And then um, on the far right, that column set gives you some strategies and ways that you can help your student to be able to further develop their language, some recommendations. Okay, so it, it's fairly easy. That little red diamond lets you know exactly where the student is with regard to the range. Um, and then some descriptors of what they can do, what they should be able to do based on this particular score. Um, and I think it's important to remember to tell parents that this score report is, is representative of one day in a student's life where they did this performance test. It is not the end all be all of what they are capable of doing. Um, and it happens in the fall. And on this day in the fall, this is what they were able to do or provide. And we continue to work through the rest of the year on um, language development with them. So that's one of the reasons why we talk about this um, student proficiency report. Um, I always recommended that my teachers show this at the very beginning of the year at that first parent teacher conference, that they bring it out again at that February um, parent teacher conference, because this really highlights for them um, where their student is expected to be by the end of the year in whatever grade level they are. You can see that highlighted in that kind of, you know, tan area. Um, this happens to be a third grade French. Um, proficiency report, and you'll notice that in third grade French and listening ability, we're expecting the, the student to be intermediate low by the end of the year. In speaking, we expect them to be novice high, and it has a list of all of those things that they should be able to do, those can-do statements, right? And then it, it's a great, um, this proficiency re report is really great to be able to show parents What's next for them? What does an intermediate mid look like? Here are some things that would indicate what an intermediate mid would look like or an intermediate low. And some of the tasks that your um, students should be able to do. And, and it's a great conversation starter for them to know how can I as a parent support my child in um, being able to, to develop their language at home. So this is a great thing to have right next to that score report because that, that Apple score says, on this is my performance on this day in the fall. This is where I fell. This is where I am right now. But by the end of the year, I'm hoping to be in, in these areas. And here are some things that I can do um, to help me get there. Um, so we recommend that you share the Apple reports um, at parent-teacher conferences for our elementary um, dual language immersion teachers and families. Um, we also have, I've linked here in this presentation, and uh, it's just a one pager that says understanding the Apple score report. It's very simple. Um, 
In fact, let me see if I can click in and see one of these. It just gives an overall what the Apple measure is, what um, the fall, what are the fall grade level performance benchmarks um, for, in this case, Chinese and Russian. And what does that mean? What does a novice mean? What does an intermediate mean? What does an advanced mean? And how I can support my child. And all this says here is that, you know, speak to your child's teacher regarding ways that they can support language development. But there's also, um, here's some links to the Apple Measure site and also links to the Utah DLI um, webpage as well for them to be able to access and hopefully get more information. All right, um, questions. What are your questions about sharing the Apple report with parents? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So do we suppose to be allowed to share a report um, before the par parents conference? Um, we recommend that you share it at parent-teacher conference. Um, and the reason that we do that is because then all of the DLI schools send them out at the same time. Um, in these communities, the, the parents tend to talk. And if somebody sends it out earlier, um, then we end up getting a million phone calls <laughs> saying, how come, how come she has it, but I don't? And so we set a standard date where we recommend that you send them out. Your school, um, if, if you wanna talk to your principal and say, hey, we'd like to send them out before um, parents come to parent-teacher conference so that they have a chance to look at it and formulate questions, that's fine as long as they all go out together at the same time. Okay. Any other questions that you have? Yes, hi, I have a question. Uh can we have access to the Apple results from past years, like to see how our students were doing and to compare how they are doing now? Um, I bet that we could data mine that information out, but that would need to be a request that would come through um, your coach or your principal and just let us know. And then if you let the dual language immersion team know that you're interested in, in looking at those scores, um, they can actually probably sit down with you. And um, well, I was gonna say, they could probably data mine that out in dashboard and you have access to dashboard, but I'm not sure that all of the Apple scores have been uploaded through the years. I'm not sure how far back that goes. We asked them last year to upload the Apple scores onto dashboard, um, but I, I think last year was the first year that they were uploaded. So you um, you could sit with your coach and have them walk you through how to look up a student and see what their Apple score was, but it will only show you from last year. Um, if you are looking for years previous to that, that would be a request that we would we could put in and have our IT people data mine that out for us and for you, yes. Um, what, what grade are you teaching in Spanish? Uh, fifth grade. Fifth grade, okay. So you could definitely see last year's. Um, if you wanted to see the year before, just let us know and we can, we can get that info for you. Oh, great, that would be great. So the parents can see how, we, how the students were doing before and now. So they have the complete picture. Yeah, you could, yes, you could. Not all of the um, example, like the performance assessment for Apple, we don't test the same tests every year, they're different. So in third grade, it's listening and speaking. In fourth grade, you have a writing component and a listening component, not a speaking component. And then in fifth grade, you come back to the listening and speaking again. Um, and then in eighth grade, you do the writing piece again. So um, you could you could pull up the scores, but they might be for different areas that you're going to be looking at. Okay. okay. Any okay. other questions? Any other questions that you have? Well, I appreciate you joining me today. It's so nice to see your faces and feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you have. Um, I hope that this was helpful in guiding you through how you talk about I, 
I sat and um, gave this presentation to my my daughter last night, um, who is 25, and she said, "Wow, that those actful uh, you know ranges are that's that's kind of heavy, mom." <laughs> you know, trying to explain that to people. You know, what's a novice? What's an intermediate? What's an advanced? And what they ought to be able to do during those things. So, um, I think you guys will do a great job of sharing that information with with your parents and um, reach out if you have any other questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you're Julie. So, you're so welcome. Have a good Wednesday. Bye. Bye-bye.